Sea Wolves Nation, welcome to Sea Wolves Weekly. My name is Austin David, the voice of the Sea Wolves, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit new. We're going to be bringing you a bit of a TV show, if you will. We're going to get some interviews with some players. We're going to show you the highlights of the week that was in the first week of the MASL, uh, as well as some fun facts and, and stuff about the team that you may not know. So uh, come with us as we go along this journey, and uh, let's, uh, let's get right into it. So let's take a look back at the first week that was for the Seawolves as they took on the Florida Tropics in the first game of the MASL season. Uh, very tough, contentious game. Obviously, it is a rivalry game, and uh, teams came out firing. It was Omar Tapia's pass to Johnny Mendoza that opened up the scoring for the Seawolves as they led it 1-0 early on. Tropics came back to equalize through Rafa Alves. And that was the score heading into half, one to one. Uh, Peter Sliwa came up with some huge saves late in the second quarter to preserve that score line, but it would not last for long. Going into the third quarter, Ricardo Cavallo broke the deadlock as he fired one high past Peter Sliwa and Yoshi Sandoval's head, and that made it 2-1 heading into the fourth quarter. Pressure from the Seawolves came on. Kevin Naranjo's pressure turned into a Richard Schmerman score. So he leveled it up at 2-2, but then just moments later, it was the team from the West, Matt Clare, off a pass from Joey Tavernisi. And that was the final, 3-2 the score, as now the Seawolves will head into Week 2 for a rematch with the same team to look to rectify that score line. As we take a look at some of the other teams across the league, of course the teams have changed up a little bit. You now have two conferences instead of divisions. Seawolves kind of sitting mid-tier right now. It's only one game in. Some teams have played two. Some teams have played three, as you can see on the Eastern Conference standings in front of you. So a lot to play for as we head into week two. And for the Seawolves, it's going to be an interesting matchup here, as not only will they be playing the Tropics on Thursday at 7.30, which is country night, by the way, it will also be the first of two games in that week as they will also play the Baltimore Blast in Baltimore on Saturday night. So now we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to come back here in just a moment. We're going to interview the head coach of your Orlando Seawolves, Chris Kokalis, and we're going to hear what he has to say about just what the team is all about right now and uh, how things have been going in practice. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hi right, folks, welcome back to Seawolves Weekly. Today we're going to be joined by the head coach and the general manager of the Orlando Seawolves, Mr. Chris Kokalis. Chris, how you doing? Good, Austin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, anytime. So, run me through uh, last week, first game, obviously a, a lot to kind of process with that. What, what did you see from the team and, and kind of going into this week, what, what are you expecting uh, from your guys? Well, I thought defensively we played very sharp. Uh, you know, we came in with a game plan to you know, shut them down defensively. Uh, they have a lot of weapons. Um, you know, Gordy Gerson, Zach Reggett, Ricardo Carvajo, uh, you know, Drew Ruggles is a threat, a Victor Pereira. Um, so they, they have a lot of weapons to utilize. So we 
um, wanted to shut them down defensively. I thought we did. Offensively, obviously, we were missing uh, some guys with visa issues. Um, but, you know, I think there were things that we can build off of from that performance. So now you, you talk about kind of the offensive struggles. It was a very low-scoring game when it, when it comes to just indoor soccer, uh, only 3-2. to two. But like you said, defensively, you kind of held them. Now, offensively speaking, uh, what have you kind of looked at through the last couple of days in practice and, and kind of leading into Thursday of, of what you can improve on? Well, we need to improve on our finishing. Uh, you know, we had a lot of opportunities. I think we led the game in shots, um, which is a positive, but we've got to finish those shots. So I really stress this week in training that we need to make sure we're doing a better job finishing. I think we need to get more numbers in the box uh, as well to create those scoring opportunities. And the goals are going to come. I've told the guys we need to be patient. Uh, we'll stick to our game plan and, um, you know, the, the rest will kind of fall into place. So now for you, you know, you mentioned kind of some of the missing pieces offensively and, and even defensively as well. Uh, who are you looking forward to step up uh, in these next game or two uh, while you're still missing those, those offensive dynamos? Well, I think you've got guys that definitely have the capability of putting the ball in the net all up and down this lineup. Uh, you look at guys like Richard Schmerman, he came up with a goal. It was great to have Johnny Mendoza back in action. Uh, he always finds a way to find the net. Johnny on the spot, as you put it in the broadcast. Um, so, you know, having those key players, but then you got guys like Yoshio Sandoval, Mario Alvarez, uh, Luis Mota. These guys all have the ability uh, to finish as well. And uh, I think everyone needs to rise to the occasion. I've told the guys from the get-go, we're a team. We're not about one individual player. So uh, my expectation is no matter who's in the lineup, we need to get the job done on the field. So now for, for you and, and for the team, you know, you've played the Tropics, you're playing them again. Does it kind of help or hurt having already played them and, and now going back to them? Because not only do you guys have a, a good kind of barometer of what they're about, but now they have a better barometer of what you're about. Well, I think, you know, both teams are just going to get better game in and game out. You know, they certainly are going to improve. Uh, you know, they've got a lot of new pieces on the field that need to get used to playing with one another. That timing as they get it down, they're going to get sharper. And then the same thing for us. I think we've got some new pieces. Uh, guys are still kind of learning how to play with one another. So I think for both teams, uh, you know, it's a positive. Uh, they battled some injuries uh, coming into that game. I expect some of those guys to return to their lineup. And then for us, we're hoping that... Uh, the uh, visa gods help us out, and we're able to get some of these visas approved to get some of our guys back out on the field as well. All right, fair enough. So now, looking forward and ahead, past this Tropics game, you, you have a very, uh, another close game time-wise when it comes to how the schedule has changed since the, uh, the league has shifted things around a bit. Uh, so now you have a game on Saturday against Baltimore. How does that kind of go into your preparation, knowing that there's so there's close games in close quarters? Well, I think you, you've seen it last season with our struggles in back-to-back -back games. Uh, that's why the fitness component was so important to me, this training camp. We needed to make sure that we prepared our bodies to be ready for back-to-back -back games. And this will be our first test, obviously, going up against Baltimore, a very talented, well-coached team. Uh, Danny Kelly's done a great job. They've got a lot of their returning pieces. So it's going to be a tough test. But I tell the guys our goal is 1-0 every game we go into. So we've got the Tropics first, and then we'll look forward to uh, Saturday's matchup as we head to Baltimore. Perfect. All right. Well, Chris, appreciate you coming on. We look forward to seeing you on the bench on Thursday, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, everyone. It's Dr. Brett Chance from Chance Chiropractic Rehab and Wellness, and we are the Orlando Seawolves official team chiropractor. We specialize in a whole body approach to rehab and wellness. Our treatment is based around chiropractic care, rehab, exercise, and nutrition. Our goal is to get and keep you out of pain. For more information, you can visit us on Instagram at Winter Park Cairo or check out our website, winterparkchiro.com. And welcome back here to Seawolves Weekly. Once again, my name is Austin David, voice of your Orlando Seawolves. 
Uh, as you can see here behind me, we are here at High Soccer Arena, the alternate training ground of your Orlando Seawolves. Uh, we've been training here the last couple of days and uh, players have really been going at it, uh, preparing for this Thursday's game. And speaking of players, we've got another one to interview here today. Richard Schmerman, who scored one of the two goals in the game last week. We're going to hear what he has to say about the start of the season and uh, what his thoughts are heading into this weekend's matchups. So stick around. New Endless Pan Pizzas on CeCe's Buffet. Fully loaded Supreme and meat eater toppings. Starting at just $5.99, it's the best price for Endless Pan Pizza. CeCe's. I think we need more time. You said you like the car. Sign it. Huh? Just do it. Sign it. Some dealers really like high pressure sales. You waste my time or you don't want to sign? Mullinax Ford's upfront pricing takes the pressure out of buying a car. That's no pressure. That's Mullinax. All right, folks, welcome back to Seawolves Weekly. I'm joined here by defender and goal scorer extraordinaire, Richard Schmerman. Richard, how you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Austin. Yeah, of course. So uh, you got off to a pretty good start for you personally. Uh, team fell 3-2, but a lot to build on. What did you see from your point of view uh, on the game against the Tropics last week? Um, I thought defensively we had a great game. A um, few mistakes and... We'll learn. You know, we're all still getting used to you know getting used to each other, how we play, figuring out each other's styles. But uh, I think we're on the right path. So now, for you personally, coming off the year you had last year, career highs and goals, assists, points. What are you looking for this season to kind of build off of? Uh, are you are you trying to be more inclined offensively? Or are you trying to be more of a lockdown defender? What what, what is kind of going through your head uh, as you head into the season? Uh, I would love to, you know, continue and score goals but um, really doesn't matter to me who scores um, I had a lot of free kicks last year that's where a lot of my goals came from I took advantage of those opportunities and you know look went my way but um, I don't care who scores I just you know as long as we all get the victory and do it together so now Chris has been kind of preaching the, the team effort and kind of the the, the team mentality uh, compared to last year and, and going into this year kind of how have you seen that change with some of the guys that have returned from last year coming into this year it, you know, it didn't really take long for them, the guys that were returning from last year, to get into what we were doing. Um, we're just picking up where we left off, and uh, like I said, we're we're not off by much. You know, we're going to get some of our guys back that are having trouble with visas, but um, we're gonna, we're going to make do with what we have for now. So now. It with the returning players, you have a lot of new faces. We've kind of talked a little bit about how they've been kind of meshing in with the team. How have you seen that uh, from your standpoint, especially on the defensive end with some of the new pieces? Uh, it's it's really nice. Uh, I think last year we kind of struggled to defend as a whole group, you know, uh, getting all five guys behind the ball. But with the new guys that we've brought in, I haven't seen any you know any trouble with that. Everybody gets behind. They defend for each other. You know, we're uh, we really are one team. So now looking ahead into this coming week's games, you have the Tropics on Thursday at home, and then you have a very quick turnaround when you head off to uh, Baltimore on Saturday. You know, it, it's kind of a shift from what you were, had going into the season. How does that kind of affect your mentality, knowing that you have uh, so many close games in quick succession and, and kind of having to adjust and adapt to that? We had a lot of trouble with that last year. Uh, you saw that, but this year, you know, preseason, I think that we have prepared for it. You know, we play Thursday, we got one day of rest, we turn around, we play again. Um, that's stuff that we have been working on in, in preseason. We have early morning practice, then a late practice in the evening, and then we turn around and we do it again. You know, um, you know we're ready for it. So now, going into this game against the Tropics again, you know, you've already played them. You know your ten their tendencies. You're familiar with a lot of the players as well. Um, how does that kind of affect you going into this game, knowing they know what you're about now and you know what they're about? Um, we're gonna try and you know, we'll try and defend the same way, um, make them come to us, and hopefully cut out the mistakes. Uh, I think if we learn from our mistakes, then we're gonna have a successful game Thursday and Saturday. All right. Well. Schmerms, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll be right back here on Seawolves Weekly. Now, commercial free Monday on the Wolf. Here we go. The Wolf. The Wolf. 103.1. Yeah. The Wolf. After an accident, you need a fight. 
Injured? Choose a champion. Choose a winner. Let me fight for you. The new $3 Little John from Jimmy John's is just like our original sandwiches, only littler. So we bought a little ad on Lil John. Little John! Yeah! $3! What? All right, welcome back here to Seawolves Weekly. That was Richard Schmerman, defender and goal scorer extraordinaire. Uh, as we look ahead, like I said, two games coming up this weekend. Florida Tropics for Country Night at the Silver Spurs Arena at 7.30. And we have a game on Saturday against the Baltimore Blast in Baltimore. You can tune into that one on MASL TV as well as on YouTube. Stay tuned to all the social media channels for all the info on how you can tune in. And with that, we're all done. Thanks for tuning in to this first inaugural episode of Seawolves Weekly. We're going to try this again next week and see how it all goes. If you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, or just general thoughts, please let us know on any of our social media channels. And with that, I'm Austin David. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.